guys, that's Dorota Paritska International, new artisan educator here, and I'm in with Eva. And you can guys see it, we have uh, transformed those nails a little bit. We are going to change the shape of them and uh, go from uh, an almond shape to the squabble shape with some French manicure. Okay, so on this hand, we've got the fiber gel, uh, the fiber in the bottle is the build your gel in the bottle, and it's actually fantastic, it's as awesome. I'm going just to file away the color of it first and we will have to reshape it the entire nail so just file this color it's awesome for a natural nails because um, sometimes when we apply the hard gel overlay or when we apply acrylics on top of the natural nails the natural nails work with it too much and that can cause separation of the product in a way the fiber gel kind of works together um, with the natural nail uh, which gives a little bit more flexibility um, so I do really love it uh, for my clients even for those ones with the very problematic nails like which are uh, prone to lifting so as you can see it like I'm basically just removing the color which was on top of it and there is nothing like no lifting no trouble at all and Eva says she's really active <laughs> she just got a new um, garden so she have been really really busy with the work in there and obviously she's a mom as well too how old is uh, three 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 year old so you can just imagine Okay, so that's the color off from those nails, and then we are going to, uh, as our next step, push back the cuticles. And they are decent cuticles, like usually my clients don't have as much of the skin to, uh, like cuticles to be removed. Um, with Eva I'm doing a little bit uh, more than usual, uh, just because there is a lot, a lot to remove. Then using the cuticle beads, so first of all, I'm, and I'm going to work with a few different tools. So first of all, I'm going to use the uh, cuticle bead to remove the cuticles which are on the nail plate. And I'm working one side first. She doesn't have a gentle cuticles. I can be as rough as I like <laughs> with them, and uh, that's a kind of like a nail folds and a cuticles where you can do a little bit more work. Uh, most of my clients are a Scottish clients and their skin is much more gentle. Um, I mean obviously as the name says like a Russian manicure is quite popular in Russia and Eva is from Latvia not far from the borders. Uh, so those the Polish girls they've got kind of similar nail folds as well like see if you would check um, um, people from like uh, Japan, China, they have hardly no faults at all uh, and they have hardly any cuticles at all. Um, so depending on your ethnics, you would have a different nails, different, uh, um, different uh, skin uh, around it. So um, obviously you can really see the difference of that. Okay, and after this part is done, I'm going to trim them. And as I say, this is um, a slightly different type of the of the nail folds and the cuticles, so I can easily remove more than usual and I think guys um, what I wanted to say also as well like this is really a good example of um, showing you that uh, 
there is no way you can achieve the same results with different hands and different uh, different needles like look even at the shape of those natural needles they're so curved like uh, there is a really decent C curve there is a um, like a the also feels different they're much stronger needles like and I could carry carry on um, so obviously you wouldn't achieve those kind of results um, with a different uh, different uh, ethnicity is that how you say ever help me no ethnicity you have no idea okay <laughs> I'm just trying to say that obviously Eva is from Latvia, yes, like ethnicity, La yeah. ethnicity yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another decent piece the only thing i which i don't like about eva's nails is she used to file them really high up at the sides and they um they kind of detached from from the sides so that's the only thing and except from that i think she got like the most amazing natural nails like they're so strong they're so pretty Okay, after this part is done, I'm going to shorten them. So we are going to go for a coval uh, shape. So we come up quite short. And then because they are natural nails, I don't want to, So that would be my square shape. I don't want to keep them square. I'm going on the side and I'm just filing the side a little bit and then round off the edges. Okay, so this is a shape we are going for. Squaval, square, round in the corners. Blend the natural nail with the previous product and then do the same on the... They look so pretty on this shape as well. Okay, again on the side. Round of those corners and then blend the old product with the natural meal. When you're doing a client's nails, try to sit nice and straight so you can file straight. You can also check the client view as well, this is quite helpful. And on this nail, just because it's just like this, usually because we use it for writing, I quite like to check the client view uh, to make sure I do not uh, misshape it. Okay, then this one as well. Look how I'm holding, so I'm also supporting the nail. Uh, because I'm filing quite quick and strong, I don't want you it to like move too much. That would be first of all very painful for the client. And then secondly, you could cause a trauma as well. So uh, watch how I'm holding that. I'm also pulling her nail folds down, like look how uh, protected they are. So I can kind of file a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit faster <laughs> without of hurting uh, my client. This one is wonky. Touch it up. We want to give Eva nice and pretty nails. She's going away on a holiday. <laughs> okay, so before I start applying the product, I slow down because that's also just a quick uh, kind of work. I'm checking for any other imperfections and if there is any other places I want to um, touch up. And then once I'm happy with it, I can take a dust brush, remove any dust which is on it. So remove the dust. Take a blue scrub to dehydrate the nail plate properly. So dehydrate it well, clean it all. 
Wait for it to dry, apply an extra nail prep. Wait for it to dry, universal air bond, and then we can apply the fiber gel. So let me talk a little bit about the fiber in the bottle. Um, it is awesome stuff. Like imagine you've got some bendy nails and then you apply so strong stuff like a glass. Uh, when the natural nail bend, the glass doesn't, so it can kind of lift off from the natural nails. Why this uh, fibers in the bottles, they are more flexible, but also they're strong because they've got those extra fibers in. And um, and the color I'm going to use is a satin pink. It's a, like a very um, milky, milky pink. I like it for a baby boomer. Um, normally, I quite like to also use a darker, um, darker color for a French manicure, but I like it, like, Eva usually takes really good care of her nails, she doesn't stain them or anything, so I quite like it, it in this light version as well. Uh, I'm applying it uh, all over first and then I fill up the little apex uh, area. We need to remember they are natural nails and we don't want to build up a Kilimanjaro, like a huge amount of the product, because it will just look ugly. So nice and thin layer, then fill up the apex area and I'm kind of doing this motion like in and out and then press it harder so I don't have excess of the product in there. I'm checking how the product is behaving and if it allows me, I'm going to do maybe one more. Um, but I'm kind of on the side when, it, when the pinky will start to run soon because it doesn't go, um, it doesn't sit straight if that makes sense. So I'm just going to freeze it inside. And then we have to do another one and shape them well before we start painting the French manicure. I take it back. When you're freezing the product, make sure you freeze at least five seconds. Like anything shorter is, is not making the product to freeze and then it can run. Pick up another scoop of the product. Look, the motion I'm doing is like kind of in and out and watch it because when you're working with the um, gels in a bottle, uh, the builders in a bottle, if you do play overly too much, you will have lots of air bubbles. They're quite thick and you've got the brush um, which is uh, attached to them. So if I'm going like this, you know, you will create, look what is happening. Like I will create, oh, actually it's not too bad. No, I'm not creating this many bubbles, but... You know what? I, we've got few, 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 few of us working in here. Oh, there we are. I've got some air bubbles now. A uh, few of us working in here. And then Juliet was you, I think, once asking like, oh, this fiber has so many bubbles. <laughs> so basically, it's depending how you pick up your product. Uh, I might actually demonstrate when my hand is curing. I don't want to stop the camera. Um, so when I'm picking up the product, like I'm not going as quick, I'm going kind of slow and then brush from one side. So I, I'm not bringing in like all those bubble. And then when I'm putting it back in, I make sure the brush doesn't split and I just put it in and close it. Uh, so that's a bit of theory. Okay, and that's them cooked. So we are going to use the UV cleanser to remove the inhibition layer. Clean them well. Actually, thank you, bye. Actually, the fiber in the bottle is a so cable gel as well, uh, for those of you who don't like filing. I personally prefer the filing. I don't know why, I just prefer filing. Uh, I'm filing nice and straight, one side nice and straight, other side. And to be honest, there is not much filing, which I need to do with this nail. It went so beautifully in. File one side, file other side, straighten it up. Some people don't file actually the um, Bouldier's gels, like Bouldier's in a bottle gels. I do like to file it. Um, as you can see, it like I don't don't play necessarily too long time with the application of the product uh, because I find it like doesn't matter how much you try, how much time you spend, you will be just quicker off. Take this file and do those couple scratches, especially that I'm not even filing the entire surface. For French, you always have to make sure your hairline, so that's the free edge, the the, um, um, the place you see is really nice and thin. You don't want like a huge thick free edge in there because it just doesn't look nice. It's 
so I'm really concentrating uh, around the cuticle area. The middle is not too bad and we are going to buff it a little bit. I'm really working through my free edge. Then once I'm happy with it, we are going to take a white buffer. Just go all over like a couple of times. This one is really strong buffer. Um, so I'm usually doing a couple of the motion with it. And then I can take this buffer and just buff around the cuticle area. Make sure everything is nicely blended. <laughs> I need to guys show you those natural C curve because it's unbelievable. Like, look at this. Like, can I maybe more even? <laughs> yeah, it's so beautiful. Like, really rare. Like, um, most of their clients here got pretty flat nails, um, so they are just completely different shaped nails. Okay, and then once it's all buffed, I'm going to take another cuticle bead and we are going to still smooth out the uh, nail folds. And then cuticle bead again. And I've got a few different ones, guys. I quite like using uh, this. Um, it's kind of like a buffer. You have to be par uh, careful to don't um, overheat it like client skin, so I'm always checking, but it's quite nice to buff those sides. Um, and I'm doing one side. Again, this isn't something which I would do it for most of my clients because their skin is just too, too fragile. Obviously, I will check with the clients, like, Eva, please let me know if you would feel any heat coming up. You can kick under the table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then put it back into the reverse and buff up the other part. This is kind of like finishing off um, the cuticle removal and just make the entire um, manicure much, much cleaner. that's the cuticles all buffed up I can clean it and then paint the French manicure uh, obviously I'm using the um, uh, blue scrub to clean it so the skin might go really dry and dehydrated looking again uh, but once we once we finish all the painting it will all look nice and beautiful Okay, so for a French, we are going to use the white French gel and the angular brush. I quite like using the angular brush. First of all, I'm going to take my gloves off because I, I just cannot use uh, my hands freely uh, with the gloves on. And then we are touching up the corner of the smile line and then doing the other corner of the smile line. Clean it up. Go into a V shape. Okay. 
make sure you sit nice and straight and then push it up actually french manicure is start getting more and more popular at the moment I would say probably <laughs> I'm wearing it as well and I love it actually so much and just the same V shape and I'm using the technique which is like painting the um, with the gel polish so i'm pushing up my smile line you could also use a small brush we've got those liner brush uh, i have used it for a uh, i usually use it for a gel polishes so if i'm painting the french with the gel polish i quite like using this uh, uh, liner brush as well I think it's a matter of like uh, getting used to something as well and because I have been doing uh, so many French manicures with this brush I'm just so used to it now check always the uh, corners of the smile lines they've got like a same height Thank you, bye. bye. Okay, so push this one in. I just need your hand. That's it. I still want to be in the camera, but I need to move it because I'm kind of keeping my hands in the air. And if I do keep my hands in the air, there is no way I can paint it nice. So your position is really, um, really important when you're doing a French manicure. And obviously, you not talk when you do the French manicure. So the rota just shone. <laughs> it's just ever have no time, so cannot spend ages on it okay can I see your other hand so normally I paint both at the same time I'm just checking if the thickness of the French is the same and uh, yeah I'm happy you can cook it <laughs> Uh, it's easier when you do it obviously this at the same time and that's what I was uh, saying about like uh, consistency in some previous videos do one step at a time because otherwise it will be hard so I had to compare the other hand with this hand if I wouldn't um, it could end up that the French would be a different thickness because I have for I have done so many other different steps um, by that time now we are going to use some Swarovski crystals and some base gel to apply them in and the caviar beads because caviar beads always look so elegant especially with the french manicure so base gel and base gel is fantastic that's how i have attached those flowers uh, on my nails okay i take it back Eva. thank you so what i'm doing now is i'm just putting a drop of the base gel and then we are going to stick those crystals in there It's so pretty. And 
inside. Freeze the product for like a couple seconds. Uh, and then we are going to keep those caviar beads in there. I take it back. So for caviar beads, I'm using a small brush. I'm just touching it up in there. Pick up a couple of them. So I've got three on this side. Three on the other side. Oh, lucky me, three each time I have picked. And then single ones in there. So one. You know why, guys? Because I, I actually got Olivia to bring me the new brush. And normally I'm working with like really old, disgusting brush. And then it's quite difficult to apply those caviar beads. Uh, but today it was so easy because the brush is fresh. Brilliant. Let's cook them in. So we are going to freeze them for five seconds, then apply the top coat and that's those uh, fiber in a bottle gel set finish for my lovely client. I take it back. And the top coat I'm using is uh, Block the uh, UV uh, top coat just because it's a summertime. We want the French to look nice and fresh for a long time without of yellowing. I do not apply the top coat over the crystals. We want them to be nice and shiny. Make sure you also do not over cure your uh, product when you're doing a French. You don't want to over cure it uh, because that can cause the yellowing of the product as well. If instead of curing like a 60 seconds, you would cure like I don't know four minutes or something <laughs> inside. And then once they're done, that's uh, how they look. I hope, guys, you have really uh, enjoyed this uh, video with the fiber uh, in the bottle. I'm sending you glittery hugs and bye for now.